What is going on guys? So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do your inner and outer tie rods. It's about time I need to do it and since I did put the new wheels on, my line is a bit off since I raised up the car also. Yes, you can't tell, but my friend was driving behind me the other day and he said my car is driving lopsided as if it looks crooked but it's actually going straight. So I need to do my inner and outer tie rods right now and then get the car aligned today also. But, oh. Heads up, I already did the driver's side when I got off work yesterday so I could uh, finish it earlier or finish it faster today. I mean, it doesn't take that long, probably takes like 30 minutes to do. But this is the outer tie rod and the inner is in here. Now these aren't like aftermarket like hard rates or anything. I had these chilling in my garage for so long. You guys have been watching my videos for a long time. But this is about time that I finally install these. This is the inner tie rod. And this is the outer. And this is the nut that goes right here onto the inner tie rod. Damn it. Come on, buddy. Get out. And that's the nipple for that if you want to add more grease into it. But there's a lot of ways to do this. But I did it the easiest way, as in, like, I have all the right tools. You don't need all the right tools, but with the right tools, it does make it a lot easier to do. One is this piece. This is the ball joint remover. So the tie rod goes like that. And then normally on slam cars, there's a lot of tension on all your suspension commands because the car slammed. So as you tighten this portion, the bottom portion would move up and I'll slowly push the ball joint out. And good thing about this is this does have Pretty much like a little groove so it doesn't really ruin your ball joint or the bushing that you're uh, doing and this is roughly 20 bucks from Harp Freight but I had this from so long ago when I had my slam four door it does the job all the time and yeah you could adjust it too for bigger uh, ball joints or not ball joints but bushings or whatever and I do have this inner tower removal set I'll show you guys how to use that in a bit when I uh, take everything off but this is I think 30 bucks from Heart Freight. I got this a long time ago and it does its job. You could easily use a adjustable wrench on the end of your inner tie rod to get it out. The one that goes right here. But you have to go under the car and all that. But I'm trying to do everything from above the car. So I'm going to use that. And then the boot, you're going to be. I think I have a new boot somewhere. Yeah, I do. So. Your boot. Make sure you buy the right one because sometimes these ones they do come too small and won't fit around your steering rack. But um, they use metal clips even on the one on your car if it's original. What you do is just splice it off with some pliers or I mean dikes and then slip it right over and put it. I use zip ties so they're easy to remove instead of using this shit. So zip ties do the job. But we're going to be putting that on too. But first off I need to jack up the car. I already did the driver's side. I need to do this side and then send the car to alignment or bring the car to get alignment today also. Hope it's not busy. And I need to take out my bumper because the driveway for the place that I go to is straight up shit. Damn, don't those look so good? Look at that concave. All right, so got it all out. Now, what you want to do is, normally all your tie rods that do have a cotter pin, so if you could bend it by hand, which I can, Bend it so you can pull it out. It'd be a lot better if I had pliers, but pull that out, and that right there is a 17. And oh, yeah, this is for all the people that want to know how if your tires are actually fucked. If you do this, if they wiggle like that, your tires are shot, and my bushings are shot on there, so that's why on the new ones over there. Let me put it on a stop all that. So once you have the 17 out and the cotter print out, or I mean broken loose, make sure you loosen this also. I use a adjustable wrench for that because I don't have the uh, big enough wrench for it. All right, so there's a lot of ways you can do this. You use the pickle fork, but I use this. So it goes right under the bushing like that, slides under. And this is a 19. And then as you see, it's gonna compress it. Let me grab my 19. Just like that. 
and then just tighten it. And sometimes you should stand back, it doesn't shoot like that. There you go, so now it's out. And then try to remember where your Otaro is at so you can get an eye alignment just so you can drive back to the alignment shop. And then just twist this out. Get that shit busted. Alright, so that's out. Surface of where the new tower is gonna go. Make sure you clean that. It's just greasy because the bar joint or the joint or the bushing was shot on it. You can see. And it's really sloppy. Move it everywhere, see? And then the new one is firm as a fucking stick. All right, now what you want to do is you can leave this bow here since the other one does come in so you could uh, keep a reference for your current alignment. You're gonna want to take this off and the way to do that is going underneath and using a pair of little dikes right here. Make sure you have a sharp one. Go underneath and then bend the metal and then you can eventually get through it or pry it off. And then after that, we'll remove the inner tie rod which is behind the boot. I'm under the car right now. So luckily this side, this piece right here, as you can see, is clipped in. So what you have to do is take those two um, little kill lips and push push one out that way, push the other one out that way, and then the whole bag can come off. So this one you don't have to cut off. Well, for me, I got lucky. So now I'm gonna just pull these two pins out and then I'll show you guys what it looks like after when the bands comes off. Uh, never mind, I take that back. I fucking ripped it off. So, now you're just gonna take that out. And then the boot should come right off. Use your hands, just like that. There we go, now pull it out. There's our boot. Now this, make sure you have the steering turn all the way to the left, you're doing the right side, and then doing the right side, have it all the way turn. Or doing the left side, have it turn to the right. I almost forgot what I just said. But now, you can go underneath the car and use it as just a wrench, but it does get in the way, you see. That is when this thing comes in hand. I think this was 30, 35 bucks. Compared to going to AutoZone, you could rent it for like $60 and bring it back for your money back. But I like having tools, so I don't have to always go and rent tools. So, this piece will be going on here. Or whatever way you want. Top, bottom, that. And then, I do right here because you're going to have to hold it while you bring the rod over. Now, the good thing about this is it does have a one half. So you can put a one half uh, ratchet in there, put it in, and make sure you line up these two holes with, you see how there's two indents right there? And then when you have it in place, you twist this, so you lock it, oops, went too far, but you lock it in place and then take it out. So let me just put that in real quick. I know I need to invest in a tripod. Looks like that. Make sure you hold this straight, or you can put a jacket underneath for leverage, but you could easily just do it by hand. There you go. Break it loose and take it out by hand. Nope. Oh. You know it's on there pretty good still. And let's twist it out. You can take it out, but I'm recording, so <laughs> I'll just do this for you guys. Oh, there you go. And all the towers up there. The new one does come with this. Whoa, this shit's like mush. But I'm gonna grab the new one. Revolution, if you guys don't listen to Revolution. Good, good, good music. Uh, and there is everything in here. But the new one does come with that little lock washer type thing. This piece. 
Make sure when you guys do put this on, when you guys put it on here, make sure it lines up with these two splits. You see it, it has to go like that. So it locks in place. But yeah, I'm gonna put that on. Just like that. Screw it on my hand. And make sure you have the pin or like clip lined up. You can see. There we go. Locked in place. Now to screw it in. All right. Now it's not tight, so you use this or a adjustable wrench. But I'm gonna go back to using this to tighten that down and then put the outer tie rod back on and try to line it up with the old inner tie rod which is in here still. Try to line up the specs or the you know the toe because doing this does fuck up your toe and you need to get alignment. You're gonna be doing this and not getting alignment unless you're a professional like you know do alignments and stuff and adjusting your toe then go ahead. But if you're not like me just eyeball it, make sure the wheels look straight when you look at the front of the car, and then um, drive off to the alignment shop. Because I've driven with a shitload of towed in or towed out when I was doing my old tire rods on my old car, and it was not a fun time driving it. <laughs> so, yeah, let's put it all back together. When you have everything put back, focus. So, when you have everything put back, it will look similar to this. The boots in there, the new boot, I zip tied it, if you guys can see. And then this is eye alignment. This is based off the old one, but I'm gonna go get alignment right now. And before I do that, make sure you just tighten this. You don't have to tighten it, tighten it like crazy, crazy tight. And this one too, just tighten to the point where it's like tight. Don't over tighten it. And I gotta put the cotter pin in. Oh, oh, it's right here. And. Bend it down. Uh, now we are good to go. And time to go get an alignment. So hopefully that made any sense and hopefully you guys got that. It's not a really hard task. It's just after you do finish it, you do need to get an alignment. So now I'm put the wheels back on, call the alignment shop. Hopefully, hopefully you have spots available and then go get my alignment and Oh, got to take out my bumper too, since the driver does suck. So, all right. Hopefully this made any sense, and I'll keep you guys updated. So, like, comment, subscribe, dislike, up to you guys. Stay tuned for next videos. Peace out.